this class is all about the adjustment brush. We're gonna open up this portrait. I wanna show you guys um, the three dot icon here, which is the edit toolbar panel. The adjustment brush is right here. Also one of the other new features is the selection brush. So those are the two new brushes inside of Photoshop. The big deal is that you can create an adjustment simply by painting over an image. It's just a little dark under his eyes there. So maybe I can fix that by going into the adjustment brush tool. So you'll notice that from the adjustment dropdown, we have all the adjustments here. So I can just simply choose curves and I'm just going to paint over that area like so. I can now come in and, and make uh, further adjustments. Notice how when you adjust the curves adjustment layer, you inadvertently add saturation to the image. You can just click on the drop down menu here and choose luminosity. So look at the difference between luminosity right. and normal. See how it, it gets darker it's without totally. increasing the saturation. So for me, one of the best tools is the spot healing brush tool. I recommend that you create a brand new layer and click on sample all layers. For example, if I wanted to minimize the wrinkle here, what I like to do is use the modes. These are basically blending modes. If this blemish, distraction, wrinkle, whatever it is that you're trying to remove or minimize, is it darker than the skin tone or lighter than the skin tone? Okay. So, so in this case is, is darker, right? Right. It's so you want to find it. And then when we paint, we didn't destroy any of the, yeah. the texture. What I can do now is press Control Shift F brings us into the fade command. Now this is very, very important. You will not have access to the fade command if you do anything else in Photoshop after applying that spot healing removal. Uh, so it needs huh. to be done immediately, immediately after you make that adjustment. <laughs> it's got an opacity slider. So notice how I can just reduce Interesting. the opacity. See that? So now yeah. I still have my skin texture. I still have the highlights intact. It's still there, you can still that tell that it's, it's him, but it's not as intense and not as distracting. And there you go, before and after. So I was just in Rome a couple, like a week ago. You know, there's a lot of tourists in Rome, so yeah. you can use Genfill to, to remove tourists from a photo. This is the old, old workflow, right? Lasso tool, make a selection, click on generator fill, and generate. The new workflow is the um, <laughs> selection <laughs> brush tool. I'll use the bracket keys to adjust my brush size, and I can very quickly come in here and I can just click on generator fill, leave the prompt blank and generate. And there you go. Fantastic wow. results. Look at that. Then you can just, you know, keep doing that over and over again. Notice that I didn't really have to switch tools or anything. I can just come in here. Usually what I do, by the way, is I um, put everything into a smart object uh, to work non-destructively. For those of you that don't know, a smart object is a container that can hold one or more layers you, where you can apply non-destructive adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations. What does that mean? It just means you can keep changing it and it's cool. <laughs> you can always go back. What I like doing is going into camera raw filter, the geometry tool, this one here, I usually just click on auto and see if it fixes the perspective and it does. See that? It just makes it seem so much flatter, right? Isn't that cool? Well, Jesus, this has been amazing. You have shown us tip after tip and walked us through all of the latest and greatest in Photoshop. So thank you so much for being here and for everything that you've shown us. Thank you so much. I'm yeah, really it was a pleasure. pleasure. Yeah.